Hi everybody, welcome to my channel Frugal is Smirk. My name's Sam and this is where I talk about all things sewing, particularly dressmaking. If you're new here, welcome. I usually talk about sewing on a budget. I have a series of videos which is called 100 Days of Sewing, where I look at either free patterns that have been released or look at some tips and techniques if you're either new to sewing or you've been sewing for quite a long time but dressmaking's not been your thing. But today I've got a review of the new Lyra shirt dress by Tilly and the Buttons. So this is a little bit out of my normal schedule because it's launch day today and I wanted to get this video up. And so I've got a few tips and tricks for sewing it and a review as well. So if you are new here and this sounds like your sort of thing, please consider subscribing and thank you very much if you've already done so and if you hit the notification bell you'll get notified when I bring out new videos which is usually on a Wednesday with tips and tricks, Sundays I usually bring out plans and reviews and on a Friday I have uh, frugal Fridays where I look at all the new free patterns and discounts and challenges and competitions that I've found for the week. So on to today's video. So just a very quick disclaimer and that is that I have recently taken a job on in a fabric shop called Fabricate in Mayfield and one of the benefits of working for a fabric shop is that we get sent previews of patterns. So we were provided this pattern free of charge with no obligation to write a review or for me to make a video about it but myself and my boss Philippa have both made the dress and I've written a blog post for the shop that I work for and the fabric has been provided to me from that shop. So that's my full disclaimer. It's all been given to me free of charge, but there's been no obligation for me to actually do this video. This is just me jumping on just to give you my quick review of it since it's a new pattern and people won't have seen it probably. So what is the Lyra dress then? <laughs> so a few details about the dress and the design details. So it is, as you can see, it's got a shirt collar and a placket with buttons down to the waist. And then you've got a full gathered skirt into that waist. So the actual blouse part of it is quite loosely fitted. You've got about two inches of ease in the bust. You've got about eight inches of ease in the waist. So Ideally, you want to be looking at your bust measure measurements and the waist and hips um, are not so important because you've got lots and lots of ease in there. I think you've got about 20 inches ease in the hips and that's simply because it's a gathered into that bodice. So Tilly and the Buttons have graded this as a, a pattern for improvers as it's a slightly more complex make in that you've got the collar, uh, you've got a collar stand, you've got the placket. But that's all that's complicated really, unless you're really averse to doing buttons and buttonholes. There's only five. <laughs> And I have got a little video tutorial of how to put buttons on with a sewing machine. If you do have an aversion for putting on uh, sewing on buttons at the end of a project, I've got a little video to show you how to do that. I prefer to do it. I find it a much quicker way of putting on buttons. So as always with Tilly's patterns, there are a couple of variations that you can make. So you've got two sleeve lengths. I've gone for, I've opted for the short sleeve length on this, and this is hitting me about an inch above my elbow and then you've got two skirt lengths as well so you could have got the option to put an extra ruffle on the bottom and then you've got sort of it, it comes to sort of midi size and the full sleeve it's got elastic at the cuff the long sleeve version is the quite billowy sleeves you just need to gather them into the arm size here and you've just got some very simple finishes on on both of them as for sizing i think this is the first one that they brought out in their extended size range it's gone up to a size 34 in this one so there are two bands of size ranges. So she's gone from a UK size 6 to a 24 and up to a size 16 to 34 in the second size band. And so there is a little bit of overlap there. So if, you, if you're bigger than a B cup in the sort of 16 range, 16 to 34 range, then you can choose for that. But if you're more of a B cup, then you go for the first size band range. So Tilly does her size ranges in sizes 1 to uh, size 15 in this one. So size one is an equivalent of a UK size six, and that is a 30 inch bust, a 24 inch waist, and a 33 inch hip. The size 15 is a equivalent of a 34 UK size, and that is a 60 inch bust, a 53 inch waist, and a 61 inch hip. That is the body measurement. So because the, there's so much ease in the hip, I think you'd probably be, uh, be able to go even bigger in the hip, and the waist likewise as well. And Although there's only supposed to be two inches ease on this bodice, 
I feel like there's a lot more. I do feel that it is it, it is designed to be oversized and quite blousy, but obviously I'm in a in the smaller end of the size range. In terms of sizing, I've always cut a size five for Tilly and the Buttons patterns, and it does they, these seem to fit me. I actually fall between a four and a five in the bust, and I always fall as exactly as a size five at, at the waist. So I'm a 37 inch bust. Size four is 36 inches. Size five is 38 so I'm just between those two sizes. I'm in the size five size range at the 32 inch waist and a 41 inch hip. So I just feel that I could really easily have gone down a size and that would have been fine for me. But that depends on how much wearing ease that you want. So have a look at the sizing charts before you cut into your fabric and make a decision uh, as to how much ease that you're comfortable with. Like I say, there's only supposed to be two inches ease here, so for a 38 inch bust, I'm supposed to be 40 and a quarter. Uh, I feel like there's a lot more, but that's fine. I, I, that's absolutely fine. And as you can see, it's not sitting sitting on my shoulders, but it's not supposed to. It's, it's supposed to be sort of quite large and oversized. Likewise with the sleeves, you've got lots of room in there. I don't think there's any bicep measurements and I know that can be an issue for some people. Um, so you can see here, I've got a good, I can pinch a good inch there and that would be quite easy to adjust as well if you if you need more room there. With the longer sleeves, you've got, it's much more billowing so you, you'd have a lot more ease. I haven't made the long sleeve version but my boss Philippa has made the long sleeve version and we've put together a blog post jointly for Fabricate. Uh, so if you have a look at that, you can see her version with the long sleeves and see what that looks like. So the pattern is available as PDF and as a paper pattern, but the paper pattern is only available in the 16 to 24 size range. So you can only get the second size band in a PDF. So I think this is a great one for building your skills. If you've tried out a few patterns before and you're looking to extend your skill range with uh, maybe going to doing your first buttons or your first collar, Tilly, always hold your hands with her instructions. I can't fault them for beginners, they're absolutely fantastic. And she's got everything covered there. You know, she's got some little tips and techniques for getting a nice sharp point on your collar and lots of advice there that really holds your hand through it. And once you've got the bodice complete, which is the first part of the construction, it's fairly plain sailing from there. I wouldn't recommend this as your first ever project. I would say that get a few projects under your belt, maybe try her Stevie dress on top or something like that, or any of the free patterns that I sort of look at. I've done the Chelsea Raglan. That's a good one to start with. If you've never done any garment sewing before, I wouldn't start with this one, I would start with something a little bit less complex that doesn't have buttons or a zip or something like that. It is designed as a skill builder, so something to uh, extend your skills. There is a belt option on this one, so if you're not too keen on the large billowy look, you can cinch it in with a belt and I've added little thread chains at the side seams to carry that belt to stop it from falling on the floor. It really, really annoys me when you've got belts and they're just falling off all the time. And I find that you really do need it on this one because as you're reaching up, you don't really want that belt to come out of place. Of course, you can wear it unbelted. You don't need the belt if that's your style. I prefer something where it cinches me in the way, so I won't be wearing it unbelted. But great for anything where you've got a big dinner and you just want to hang loose and free. It's a, it's a great one. And it's got pockets. <laughs> She's always got your back covered with the pockets. So you've got the belt, you've got the pockets, those are, I mean, it's up to you whether you put those in or not, the side seam pockets, so you might not want that extra bulk at your hip. So the fabric options for this, designed for a woven, they've suggested cottons, uh, chambray, viscose, and even a lightweight needle cord. I've gone for this Dashwood Studio uh, Circle Line Rayon. I know, it's got squares on. <laughs> Apparently it's something to do with the underground. The designer is Rachel Parker and uh, we did email her and say, why is it, why has it got squares on um, when it's called the circle line? And it's got something to do with the London in underground. So just in case she was wondering. So this is a, a medium weight viscose. I wouldn't suggest that you went any lighter weight with a the viscose. They're calling it rayon, it's the same, it's the same stuff. It's 120 GSM, if that means anything to you. So I wouldn't go for a, a lighter weight viscose just simply because you've got, you've got these collar and, and plackets and what have you and you want something that's going to behave itself when you're pressing it. 
Um, but a viscose g just gives you that extra swishy feel. Often times I find pattern designers lump viscose just all in, in one thing and viscoses are like anything like a cotton or a denim. They come in different weights so I wouldn't go for anything lightweight but it's personally it's up to you because I just feel like it might want to pucker on the co collars and the on the plackets and what have you. So that's just my, my two pennies worth. <laughs> But Philip has made hers in a, a lovely chambray and we've got some gorgeous chambrays in. So this I will link to the shop below because we've got some of this in stock and there's different variations on this theme as well. You've probably seen some of the other ones uh, with the triangles on and it's all part of the same line. So I was pushing my boundaries a little bit with this because it's not floral, it's not striped <laughs> and I tend to go for either stripes or florals. But it's still got some of my colour palette in with the with the blues and pinks here and then I've just pushed the boundaries a little bit with um, with the oranges and the okra here. So and then I decided then I would pick out the orange with these orange buttons and use the blue thread uh, that's that's in this blue here. So that, those are just a few little design elements that I added to it. I also extended the length of the belt and I will always be wearing a belt with this. Um, I've, that's just my personal preference. I, I'm not too keen on the loose and baggy. So yes, it would be lovely in a chambray. I'm not so sure about a needle card. It, that is one of the recommended fabrics. It would, I feel gathering needle card would just be a nightmare and it just adds bulk to an area that I don't want bulk adding to. But a lightweight cotton would be really nice. So just for a bit of fun, Philippa challenged me to get this dress out of less fabric than is actually advertised. So you'd, for a size five with the short sleeves and the short dress, you're supposed to need 2.4 meters. I managed to squeak it out of two metres. Uh, Tilly actually advises you to cut the under collar and the under collar stand on the bias and that is just to help you ease it under. I didn't do that, I just went, <laughs> I went a bit rogue there uh, and yeah I got it out of two metres so I'll show you the picture of how I did it but essentially my advice as is always is to cut out your pattern pieces first, find a piece of fabric that's the same width and that is important, that's key. This um, Dashwood Studio is 140 wide, not 150 wide. If you've got some fabric in your stash and it's the same width, just lay it out and just try and try your pattern pieces out before you go buying your fabric. Fabric can be expensive and um, you, don't, you don't want to be buying more. So we do actually sell in quarter of metres, so if you find that you need two and a quarter metres, you can, you can do that. Yeah, that's my top tip of the day, just, just lay out your pattern pieces onto some existing fabric first and just assess whether you're going to need the full amount or not. And things like pockets and under collars and, and if, you've got a, if you've got something that's got a facing on this hasn't but if you've got something with a facing on or a bias binding that can always be done in a contrast fabric you don't need to use the same fabric. Those are all just tips. Also by the same token you could cut the sleeves a little bit shorter if you find those, those look a bit long. Not on the long sleeved obviously but on this shorter sleeved and the length of the skirt that's up to you as well because it is just a big rectangle so you can make that shorter or longer according to your height. Tilly as far as I know usually drafts for somebody who's five foot five so technically I should have put a little bit of extra length either in the bodice or in the skirt uh, because I'm five foot eight uh, but I didn't actually this time and I had a look at the, bo the bodice pieces and they actually looked like they were going to hit me on my waist and they do so everything's fine. It does hit me a couple of inches above my knee and I, I'm happy with that I don't I don't want it any longer but again that's something that you want to look out for and just look at any pictures that they've got online it shows you quite clearly where where everything hits. In terms of instructions the instructions are, are impeccable I mean I can't fault to these instructions there's nothing there that I need to, to add. There's everything that you need. Your the hand is out throughout. Some great tips for uh, sewing the collar and getting a nice neat point on there. And everything else is fairly straightforward, to be quite honest. The placket is separate. It's a separate pattern piece. So you actually sew it onto the bodice and uh, interface it so that it holds the buttons and buttonholes. And like I say, the skirt is just a big rectangle with pockets in. So if you've never done pockets before, it's a good one to do your first pockets on. So just one quick tip from me, uh, in addition to how Tilly does things, she uses a traditional gathering method for gathering skirts. 
I use uh, the elastic method. So I've put together a quick video on how to do that and I'll link it below and essentially what you're doing is cutting a piece of elastic the same width of your bodice. You then you quarter your bodice and quarter your skirt piece. You stretch your elastic into the skirt piece which is a longer piece and then I zigzag the elastic into the seam allowance. So yeah I'm, I'm not a fan of gathering long stretches of fabric such as tears or uh, skirts into bodices. I don't use it for into sleeves but I do use it for long stretches of fabric. I'll leave a link to that video where it gives you an explanation of how to do it and that is also written within the blog post that we've got for uh, Fabricate at Merfield as well if you prefer to learn that way. And as for putting on the buttons I've got a video about that and for doing the thread ties I've also got a video about doing that and you can do it by hand and you can do the thread ties by machine as well so I've got a, vi I've got a little video of how to do that as well. So that's it, that's my review of the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra. Um, let me know whether you're intending on making it. I think it's a, a nice twist on a traditional shirt dress. If you're looking for something fitted, then it's possibly not for you. It is a loose fitting shirt dress, is this? It's not the traditional fitted style. My only criticism really with Tilly's patterns is that um, she doesn't use models over 50. If you look at her website, it's all models in the 30s, 20s and 30s from what I can see. And you know, women of my age do so. Don't forget us. It would be nice to see us represented on the, the home page there. I know she doesn't use models, I know she uses people from the sewing world and it would be nice for some of the older models in the sewing world to get involved. So yeah, I think this is the first of her extended size range and I think there's more to come by the sounds of it. I think she's got two or three in the pipe works. So I really like it. Let me know below if you're thinking of making it or whether you, if it's something that you're considering and uh, that you want to make it, let me know below. Okay, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching. I shall speak to you later. Bye. Bye.